There is no denying that Phil Spencer was instrumental in saving Xbox, which was slowly dying after its glory days of Xbox 360 when Halo 2 multiplayer reigned supreme. We're going to go over the incredible things Phil Spencer has done to turn the tide and how he changed the entire video game industry forever. Phil's decades of experience with Microsoft starts off when he first joined the company as an intern back in 1988 when he worked on CD-ROM based titles including Encarta. After years of hard work, he would later become general manager of Microsoft Studios in 2008, then corporate VP in 2009. Phil contributed greatly in this role as Microsoft Studios is the game development division that was responsible for developing and publishing our favorite games from the Halo, Gears of War, Fable series, and more. His next big promotion came right after Xbox One's disaster of a launch, which released in November 2013. Now let's just call a spade a spade. The Xbox One was a horrific disaster before it even launched. It had no hope of success after it was plagued with poor management decisions under former Xbox president Don Matrick. Xbox One was originally supposed to require a constant internet connection to play. You would also not be able to play used games on Xbox One, eliminating the ability to trade in your games or buy used games for cheaper prices. Both of these decisions were reversed before launch, but the damage had already been done and left a bad taste in everyone's mouth, suggesting gamers are not put first with decisions made by Microsoft. The Xbox One was also $100 more expensive than the PS4 and required a purchase of a Kinect, which includes a video camera on the device. Initially, Microsoft said the Kinect would have to be plugged in for the Xbox One to work, but this decision was also retracted after many complaints that this may be a potential surveillance device. With little surprise, Don Matrick ended up leaving Microsoft shortly after the massive backlash of the Xbox One reveal. In March of 2014, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella promoted Phil to lead the Xbox, Xbox Live, Music, and Xbox video teams in Microsoft Studios. This left Phil in a very challenging position as he was leading Xbox shortly after the botched release of Xbox One in November 2013. While it didn't happen instantaneously, Phil began to slowly put Xbox back on track through several incredible ideas and always putting gamers first when making decisions for the platform. In an effort to help make the Xbox One more affordable, the Xbox One S was released in August of 2016 at $299. In November of 2017, Xbox One X, codenamed Project Scorpio, was released as the most powerful console at that time. The Xbox One X sold for $499 and received rave reviews for the increased power over the base Xbox One console and over its competition, the PS4 Pro. On June 1st of 2017, the video game subscription service Xbox Game Pass was launched. This allows subscribers access to play hundreds of games for a monthly fee instead of paying hundreds or thousands of dollars each year on buying a few individual games. The business model is similar to Netflix in the sense you get access to much more content for a much cheaper price that is paid monthly. Game Pass continued to evolve for the better by adding first party titles to the subscription service on its retail launch date, including Forza Horizon 4, State of Decay 2, and Crackdown 3. Halo Infinite and future Gears of War games will also be added to the service at launch date, so you won't have to wait to play these games. Game Pass then became available on PCs in 2019, allowing users to play games even if you don't own an Xbox. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate was also launched in 2019, which included Game Pass, Xbox Live, xCloud, and Game Pass for PC in one package, giving a tremendous amount of value in the subscription service. In September 2020, Microsoft partnered with EA and brought the EA Play service to Xbox Game Pass, adding even more games to the service. Huge AAA releases from Bethesda were also added to Game Pass in March of 2021 after Microsoft acquired ZeniMax, the parent of Bethesda. This added amazing games like Doom, The Elder Scrolls, and Fallout to Game Pass. 
One of the biggest and most valid complaints of the Xbox has been the lack of exclusive games. To combat this, Phil has focused on developing Microsoft's internal first party game studios. In addition to developing its own game studios, Phil has pushed for the acquisition of numerous game studios. Microsoft acquired Mojang for $2.5 billion in 2014, which included the massive hit game Minecraft. At the time, Minecraft had sold over 50 million copies, and by May of 2020, the game had sold 200 million copies, proving the success of the acquisition. At E3 2018, Microsoft announced the acquisition of Forza Horizon Studio Playground Games, Hellblade's Ninja Theory, creator of State of Decay Undead Labs, and We Happy Few developer Compulsion Games. Microsoft's latest acquisition was announced in September 2020 and was the acquisition of ZeniMax Media, the parent company of Bethesda Softworks. ZeniMax Media includes many incredible gaming franchises including Doom, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Wolfenstein, Dishonored, and The Evil Within. With this incredible lineup of games added to the Xbox family, it leaves no doubt that Xbox has the best games on its platform and through Game Pass. Phil is truly a visionary leader, with not only great ideas like Game Pass and acquisitions, but also with xCloud. xCloud was launched on Android devices on September 15th, 2020. This service allows you to stream video games to your Android phone or tablet. Microsoft confirms it plans to release xCloud to Apple's iOS devices and Windows PCs by spring of 2021, which would further expand the service. While most people would rather game on a console or PC in their home, there are many times you may want to play games while traveling. Many people commute to work on a bus or train, and many people want to play games while at an airport waiting to board a plane. Also, if you travel for work, you probably don't want to lug around a console through an airport and to your hotel, so xCloud is a great alternative. I have even connected my phone to a television in a hotel to play xCloud on the TV through my phone, which ended up working out pretty well after upgrading my hotel internet speed. xCloud simply provides more accessibility to play games whenever you want and is an amazing evolution in gaming that has changed the video game industry forever. Even better, xCloud is bundled with Game Pass Ultimate so you don't have to pay extra to have access to this amazing service with a huge library of games. Phil's strategy with the current console generation is not to sell as many Xbox Series X and S units as possible. It is about making games more accessible as a whole, allowing gamers to choose where they play and on which device they choose to play on. With Game Pass available on PC and many Xbox exclusives like Halo, The Master Chief Collection, Gears 5, Forza Horizon 4 and more launching on PC, Phil is making gamer-friendly decisions to allow you to choose to play on the Xbox console or PC. xCloud also gives gamers the choice of playing games on their Android or iOS devices. Phil is also open to allowing Xbox Game Pass on Nintendo and PlayStation devices, although Nintendo and Sony may not allow this to happen since it would essentially be allowing competitors' products on their own platforms. With Phil in control of Xbox, there has been such a massive focus on putting gamers first instead of prioritizing the bottom line on corporate income statements. Examples of this includes delaying Halo Infinite, which was originally supposed to launch in holiday 2020 with the release of Xbox Series X. Many publishers rush games out to meet revenue expectations for the quarter, which can lead to buggy and even unplayable games. Phil clearly has decided against this and allows the time needed to properly polish Microsoft's in-house games. Xbox Series S was launched alongside the more powerful Xbox Series X as a cheaper alternative at a lower price point of $299 compared to Xbox Series X's price tag of $499. This gives gamers more choices when choosing their next generation console, which is a great thing. The Xbox Adaptive Controller was announced in May of 2018, which is a controller that can be used by gamers that are unable to hold a controller for a long period of time or are unable to reach all the triggers and buttons. 
This is simply amazing and is clearly another decision that puts gamers first and shows how Xbox is committed to gamers and they are not just launching products to make money. Backwards compatibility has been a priority not only with Xbox One, but also with newest generation of Xbox consoles and enables the Xbox Series X and S to play thousands of original Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One games on the latest consoles. Optimizing prior generation games with better visuals and increased FPS has also been pushed by Phil to improve the experience of older games. Xbox Smart Delivery also ensures if you purchase a game once, you play on the best available version for whichever Xbox console you choose to play on. Phil Spencer has done an amazing job turning around the Xbox and making it a massive player in video games once again. The innovation of the gaming industry with Game Pass and xCloud acquisitions and consistently putting the gamer first in decisions made has led to the renewed success and very promising future of the Xbox. While no one could see the future, I do know that as long as Phil Spencer is leading Xbox, the Xbox will succeed. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel as it allows me to continue to make content. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're the first to know when a video is released. Let me know in the comments what your favorite thing Phil Spencer has done for the Xbox. Thank you for watching and have an amazing day.